That's us, Megan. Yay! We're here. Yay! Megan Edge. <laughs> Megan Edge is here. And I'm Dr. Pat. And this is playing on the Edge Radio. This is with Megan. And I get to chime in. This is Radical Change with these. And we're going to talk about radical change today. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not Megan that we have not talked about radical change. But this particular topic, I think when I thought about this after we spoke, mm-hmm. And I looked at everything, pretty much I went back and I looked and I said, well, wait a minute. Not only is Megan a healer, she teaches other people her process so they can do that too. She's a master healer. She's a teacher, radio host, public speaker, author of The Heart's Journey. And I went on, right? I went on to think about all the things you've done, the workshops that you've created, Uh, whether it's introduction to intuitive healing, whether it's the Oracle cards, you know, whether it is people learning worldwide about what you do, whether it's intuitive counseling, energy massage. And I stopped for a moment as I was reading all of that. And besides being a mom, uh, and I thought, oh, we're going to talk about on the edge of the new abnormal today. (laughs) And I thought, we have to do it because nobody else is talking about it, are they? They are not. No, they are not. Um, and it's interesting as you're, as you're listing off the variety of things that I do and offer and live in and live with, I've often had people ask me, how? How do you do it? How do you do all of it? Yeah. And my response is, is usually, well, this is normal for me. <laughs> This is my normal. I'm normally engaged in about 1600 different things at one time. And I can appreciate how someone looking in from the outside may find that. And sometimes. Um, but for me, it's just the normal way that I go through the day. And yet here we are today in this episode talking about the new abnormal. And and just as you're saying that list, it, it, it something twigged for me around okay, well, this is what we're talking about. What is it that we consider to be normal in our day-to-day lives? What might somebody else looking into our lives consider to be not normal or abnormal? And then this morning, as I was getting ready for our show and looking at why we're talking about this today, the thing that popped into my mind is that the reason we're talking about this today is because normalcy breeds complacency and complicity And within both of those states of mind, we stop asking questions. So as you're listing off all these things that I do, the question that I, that I come to is, okay, well, why do I do all these things? This actually isn't normal. Most people don't have this many things on their plates and do fairly well at most of them. (laughs) You know, the whole multitasking thing that's not supposed to be good for us. Um, So perhaps it's my turn to start asking myself some questions even about what I consider to be normal for myself, never mind what's happening out in the rest of the world that I don't I consider so. to be normal. <laughs> I think so. But you know what? I, I, on the last hour, I had Teresa Chung on. She answered this question for me. It's interesting how these, I don't know how Linda does it, but when she sets things up and she puts this show with this and this topic with this and this with this and this, So this morning, right, I had a little mini meltdown because I was, I'm just feeling sensitive. Mm -hmm. Like I was on a couple of meetings and I'm like, you know, why are they talking at me like that? Like, Mm -hmm. this is me talking to myself. Yeah. Then I had a moment with Linda and it was the last thing that put me over the edge. Now, let me just be clear. I'm not saying these people are acting any differently than they've been acting. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying they did something really bizarrely mean or weird. But today for me, it was just one of those days. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know it Mm -hmm. till we talked about sensitivity. But what you're talking about talks right to it. So here's what I learned about us in the last hour. Mm -hmm. We don't have to explain how we do it because you actually teach people 
how to be like you. Now, what do I mean? You have a sense of knowing. So when Megan Edge decides I'm going to do a show on this and I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do that and I'm going to write my book and I'm going to do that and then I'm going to create the Oracle cards, then I'm going to create a new master class and I'm so excited to be in front of all the ladies I work with, right? Mm -hmm. What's the difference? This is it for me. I got this this morning. Okay. I'm a I'm a I'm a Capricorn I'm a quadruple Capricorn I am I'm a slow learner and a late bloomer that's what they tell me <laughs> but I got it today see sometimes in our lives we try not to be us the new abnormal we try to be the normal that people want us to be mm -hmm. they try to say to Megan and to Pat slow down da 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 but what we right. haven't explained to folks, help me with this, here it is. We don't agonize over things. When we know something, we know it. Yeah. It's like, boom, going to create a network. Boom, it's going to have 10 channels. No, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I'm going to write a yeah. book. I need a heart's journey. I'm going to do photography. Boom. I'm going to do it. Yeah. I, I want to play table tennis after not playing for 40 years. Boom. There it is. I already... But yeah. there's, some, there's some relief we get from knowing and not agonizing. And I think we're in a world where agonizing is killing people today. Mm -hmm. That's 100%. my two cents. Those okay. are those are good two cents. Those are those are very right. good two That's cents. That's it. I'm done for today. <laughs> okay. I'll just take it from here then, shall I? Go ahead. <laughs> well, it's you know, it's interesting because in my teachings, I do encourage my students to find what their normal is for them. Yeah. Never mind what anybody else thinks about them, never mind going into judgment about themselves or others. I want them to find that authentic piece of themselves and to see the way that they show up in the world as being the most normal way, not normal in the box that other people might create for them, but what is their comfort with themselves. So for me, it is normal to be super busy and have a trillion projects on the go. And I love it. And to sit still, it doesn't work with me. You're a triple Capricorn. I'm a Gemini, a busy mind in many places. <laughs> my husband so, is also a Gemini. <laughs> so I'm on the opposite end of that because my son and three other, four other planets are in Sagittarius. So we're like bookends then, right? We I think are that's bookends. the way that goes. I know, I know. And yet we work so well together because we both have the capacity to latch onto an idea and run with it without getting caught up in the minutia. But thank goodness there are people who do get caught up in the minutia because they're the ones who in their normalcy are looking after all the loose ends that we leave behind us as we go rushing on to the next project, right? It's a, it's a compliment. What we're talking about today and what I want people to start thinking about is the cultural norms that we seem to as a planet right now have jumped into and grabbed onto right from the get-go of the new normal. And, and the question that I've been asking people since you and I talked about this and since I had that epiphany standing in the line up outside the secondhand store and the old fellow turns to me and says, I guess this is the new normal. And I just turned to him and said, absolutely not. No way. This is the new abnormal. I refuse to accept this as the new normal. And as I've been having this conversation with people, what's so interesting is how many people have lit up. They have lit up when I have said to them, what if this is not normal? What if we don't let this be normal? What if we decide that this is actually very abnormal? These are abnormal times with abnormal circumstances and abnormal expectations of our behavior and our compliancy and expect, you know, all of that. And what I'm watching is that as people start to shift, they're, they're pivoting their ideas around normal to abnormal, there's relief. People are telling me how relieved they feel that they don't have to try to make this normal anymore, that they've now received permission just from this conversation about abnormal. They've received permission to actually acknowledge that nothing about this is normal. Yeah. That's why we're struggling with it so much. That's why we're having so much mental illness and despair and anxiety, 
because we're all trying to fit into a box that somebody very early on and, and where it came from, I don't know. And I won't pretend to know, but I'm hoping the new abnormal goes as viral as the new normal did because literally it was within days of the sort of the official announcement of the world locking down that I started hearing people say, well, I guess this is the new normal. And I'm thinking, wait, what? It's been three days. Uh, How is this uh, normal? <laughs> oh, okay. So I didn't know this, but I got to ask you about this. Can we skip the break? Mm -hmm. Do you mind? I don't mind. Okay. I'm For good. those of you just tuning in, you're uh, tuning in, you're listening to um, On the Edge, you know, uh, with Megan Edge, of course. But I got to tell I'd you be something. Playing on the edge radio. Playing on the edge. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so. <laughs> I'm so. Yeah. I'm so like. She's in so this busy playing today. in a ping pong. Up up oh there. my god! Back and forth. Back and forth. Back and forth. Oh my gosh! That. <laughs> so Megan, when I prepared this, with people don't know that you and I spend time together and we prepare shows. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So when we talked about this, I don't know how long it was. Only a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So this morning, only a couple of hours ago. I get a message from somebody who said to me, you're going to be talking uh, like I saw, we saw you're going to do that abnormal thing. <laughs> I'm just paraphrasing what okay. they said. <laughs> and I said, yeah, we're going to be talking about this a little bit. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, are you going to talk about the comment that was made this morning? So I'm not plugged into the news today. I don't know what's going on. And I, she's, and so my friend says, go online and listen, to, look at the comments. So I did. So here's, here's the thing for me that I'm not willing to agree is the new normal because my friend said, this is the new normal. Here mm -hmm. it is. You ready? Okay. We are in the 21st century to have a world leader come out and say to his candidate that it is insulting men everywhere. If Joe Biden picks a woman as a running mate. If I'm supposed to accept that as the new normal, there's got to be something wrong with me. <laughs> that sounds like the old normal to me. But it's interesting <laughs> that this, my, fr my friend said, but get used to it, that's the new normal. Well, what's the new normal? Uh -huh. Whether Biden picks a VP or whether our president said that if he picks a woman, it's going to insult men. I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, how do we even know what the new abnormal is with this kind of stuff going on? So this topic you picked, mm -hmm. if nothing else, we have to figure this out for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have to decide yes. what it is. Tell us from your perspective what the new abnormal, what about it hit you square, boom, right in the heart. It would, it's the complicity, complicity. It's the immediate way in which so many people have simply accepted that this is just how things are going to be now. And at, right from the get go, I was questioning that. I, I, it raised, you know, I got triggered by that. I thought, no, 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 something about this doesn't feel right. Now, I've always been the sort of person that if you tell me there's only one way to do something, I'll find five other ways to do it. So, <laughs> so that kicked in for me. But also it was the idea that if we're willing to accept normal is now wearing masks, it's now six to 10 feet apart from one another, it's not having social interaction, it's doing everything on Zoom, which frankly makes me dizzy and gives me a headache. It's not questioning. And this is the point that I got tripped up on. Wait a minute, if we're willing to accept within days of lockdown, even before lockdown, we were willing to accept that this was the new normal, we stopped asking questions. And you and I, Pat, we love asking questions. We've been asking yeah. questions the whole way along. Yeah, That's part of being in radical change is looking at that bigger picture and saying, wait a minute, what's going on here? What's going on behind the scenes? What's going on with our acceptance of this? Now, I don't mean to suggest some big, huge conspiracy, although we can go there too, and, and maybe that exists, it's that at the individual level, people seemed absolutely ready, at least in my experience, the people that I was interacting with, absolutely ready to say, okay, <laughs> good, I'm going to shut down now, <laughs> without even wondering about why. 
And what else could we be doing? And what could we be doing differently? And why are we willing to accept a mask as an accessory now? Why, why am I seeing people walking down the street with nobody around them, zero risk of anything happening to them, and they're wearing a mask? Because they've accepted without questioning the necessity of this, and they have decided it's the new normal. Now, if that makes them comfortable, I'm not, I'm not meaning to be judgmental of that. I just get curious about it. And how long is somebody willing to accept that as normal? Not being able to breathe properly because they've got this over their mouth or not being able to see each other's expressions, not being able to understand what we're saying to one another. Why are we so willing to make this the new normal? When in my mind, when I look around at these behaviors, these are abnormal behaviors in abnormal times. And the behaviors are fitting for the time that we're in because this is an abnormal time. But that's what I want people to think about is the possibility that this is actually an abnormal situation that we're in and not to just blindly accept it as this is okay, because it's not okay. It's not okay that millions of people are dying. It's not okay that millions of people are getting sick. It's not okay that finances are all over the place and that people's businesses are falling and, and that you know, violence is on the uprise and that divorce is on the uprise and that women and children are at huge risk. Like none of that is normal. And I would love it if everyone would stop accepting this as normal. That's my, I agree that's my with rant. You completely. <laughs> I agree with you completely because, um, you know, and look, I'm like you, I'm not so politically plugged in that I could recite to you every single thing that's going on, but I stay informed enough so that I can, I can talk about things in, intelligently, or I can mm -hmm. figure out what I, what is it that I believe? What mm -hmm. do I believe? You know, where am I now? Yeah. And, you know, I was talking to a group of, let's just call them corporate leaders not too long ago. And they were talking about in the United States, the $600 boost to unemployment to make people whole. Mm. And I was listening, I was listening to around the table to all of the conversation, which of course is the way that apparently our Senate believes that if people get the $600, they're never going to go back to work. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm listening to this until finally one of the women at the table, because I was not part of the group. I was a, what do you call it? Moderator, facilitator, whatever. So mm -hmm. you can't have an opinion. You just have mm -hmm. to listen and make sure people speak. Mm -hmm. And finally, um, one of the men around the table followed up with, with someone else, another woman, and said, wait a minute. This is so people can stay home because their children are home. <laughs> I mean, it was an interesting conversation mm -hmm. where the old normal is you go to work, you have a job, you go to work. And whatever you did before this, just go back to doing it. Mm -hmm. Just go back, Megan. Mm -hmm. Just go back. Just go back to work. And maybe you have a five-year-old. Maybe they'll learn how to use the microwave and cook for themselves. Go ahead and do that. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you have to actually teach them stuff because they have to go online. Yes. And they have to, to learn. Yeah. But is this idea of where we are I think about this and I want to ask you this mm -hmm. because we have become highly innovative. Mm -hmm. We have been stretched. I'm watching mothers, fathers, children, people of all ages, the innovation of what they've created. Schools figure out how to get into the deepest parts of the South, how to get internet education online for people. Mm -hmm. I'm watching a society uh, a worldwide society of millions of members who absolutely refused up to this point to conduct meetings online, mm -hmm. Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, Al-Anon. These are these groups that in a minute, in a nanosecond of change, changed. Mm -hmm. So how do we rewrite this? So that we write a, a level of whatever you want to call it, normalcy, mm -hmm. that allows people 
to be the kinds of people, humanity that honors their spirit. Because that's what you and I are talking about. I'm, I don't think I can go backwards here. And I'm never going to accept a comment by a president, a person, you know, former San Francisco mayor, Willie Brown, telling Kamala Harris to decline the vice president because it's going to ruin her career. That is just Mm Oh, that stuff is even before Ruth Bader Ginsburg was born. And (laughs) that's a while ago. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry for the rant. No, hey, but you see how easy it is for us to accept things. Yes. And this is my question to you. Mm -hmm. How are you helping folks sort through it so they can decide for themselves Mm -hmm. how they want to become? So this is where I'm encouraging people to get curious and to ask questions, to look at what it is that they are comfortable with and decide if that comfortableness is serving them or if it isn't. Because my whole approach to the work that I do is about expansion. It's about helping someone see where they've created for themselves limitations in their possibilities and their potential and their healing and the way in which they show up in the world and inviting them to consider the possibility that there's more out there for them, that there's more available to them. There's more that they can do if they choose to, if they want to, and push them outside of their comfort zone. So there are like, there are lots of people in the world right now who are asking questions and that's amazing. My work is about helping my clients see the places in their world where they can belong and where they can make sense of the the experiences that they've had by helping them see that those experiences have meaning and purpose. And I think that that's more important now than ever before, because what I'm witnessing is how many people are floundering, trying to create a sense of normalcy in a time that is hugely abnormal. So I'm working with people with visualizations. I'm working with people with looking at their stories, with their history, um, how have they responded in the past to stress or how have they responded in the past yeah. to things not being feeling safe and then looking for ways that we can help them feel grounded or help them see the bigger picture or the bigger perspective. And this whole idea of acknowledging that what we're going through right now is not a normal state of affairs has proven to be really helpful for a lot of my clients right now and people I'm talking to on the street as I'm trying to get this idea to go viral. <laughs> I figure I figure if the new normal could catch on so quickly, then hopefully the new abnormal will catch on even more quickly and and help people just relax a little bit. It's not it's not okay what's going on. And I don't mean that to say that there aren't amazing wonderful things that are coming out of this. That's the case with any major change, yeah. any major shift. Look through history, you'll see it repeated over and over and over again. We are, we are a species that thrives on change. As equally, we are a species who love habit and we love comfort. And so even as change is happening, we're looking for those places where we can find that comfort and that grounding. But you know, when I've been talking to people, Pat, I have yet to find a single person who, once I get beneath the surface of the new normal, is actually comfortable. Yeah, that's what's going to be my question. I want to talk to you about that when we come back from break, because there is a big picture here. And it's a big picture of energetic uh, magnitude. Mm-hmm. You know, it is a new sense too. And, and, and for you and I, who work with people, you know, they're coming to us to ask for help. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you work with people, I work with people, and they're asking us for help. And we have to understand too, at least I, let me speak for myself. Mm-hmm. I had to understand that whatever I thought was any level of normalcy for issues in people's lives, I had to take that and put that aside mm-hmm. because this is not a place where as a world we have been before. In the United States, the last time we were close to something like this was during the AIDS epidemic, at least in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. But that, once we figured out that that was a group of people, mostly my friends who were dying, it didn't get it. But now they didn't get the press. But now we are in a different place. Mm -hmm. We're in a place where decisions that are being made affect so many people Mm -hmm. or not made. Right. And so when we come back, 
I want to talk about how the micro, what we do in our day-to-day life, Mm -hmm. what the relationship is to a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. And how do we help? How do we help each other to not feel helpless in this? Yeah. Helpless. Um, Before we go to break, Megan, would you let folks know, first of all, how they can find out more about you. But also, I was serious when I said that you work with people, you train people, you have the heart's journey, you have a book. How do people find out all of the above? Best place to to start would be my website, which is meganedge.ca. Loads of information on there about my courses, my programs. We have a whole YouTube channel where there's tons of free resources, help, information, visualizations, workshops that that I've done, everything I've ever done out in public, we video it, we record it, and then we make it available for people to be able to go and at their own pace, listen, learn, enjoy. I'm also on LinkedIn at Megan Edge Healing. I'm on Instagram, Megan Edge Healing. Um, Where else am I? Oh, Facebook, Megan Edge Healing. (laughs) Pretty much type in Megan Edge and the word healing, and you will find me and all of the things that I am doing and offering for people. I love it. And for those of you out there, if you'd like to chime in, you know, you can always give us a call or go to Transformation Talk Radio and type your question in. But our call in number is 1-800-930-2819, 1-800-930-2819. When we come back, we're going to talk about the big picture and we're going to talk about the ripple effect of this. You know, what is it in the big picture world we look in? that causes and ripples down and trickles down to who we are. Are we being asked to change? Are we being asked to look at the world differently? Are we being asked to question things? Are we being asked not to question things? When we come back, we're going to look at all of the above. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. My phone's ringing. It's Joe Biden. He's calling to give me the pick. Thanks, Joe. I'll be right there. I'm going to have Linda pick up the phone. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Wouldn't that be funny? Can we talk about rebellion for a moment? Oh, my God. Let's do it. But first, let me me just say, if you're just tuning in, (laughs) if you're just tuning into the show, you're tuning in to (laughs) Playing on the Edge. Uh, radio with Megan Edge. Of course, this is about radical change with ease. But, you know, here's the question. We're on the edge of the new abnormal, mm-hmm. the new abnormal, mm-hmm. right? Say it. Now, how do you get abnormal. to be the new abnormal? Well, let's think about it. What's going through your mind? What are you thinking? Are you going to be able to go back to the new normal? What does that mean? Mm-hmm. Your boss wants you to come to work. You got three kids at home. How are you going to go to work? I mean, I don't even want to begin. But yeah. what is it? about this, Megan, right? Mm -hmm. And this is what we talked about in the last hour. What's happening to the people that have now become very vocal? Mm -hmm. People that we're kind of thinking, you don't really have an opinion. What about the moms that decided they were going to be the wall in Portland, but yet my new favorite group, do you want to know who they are? Sure do. I have a new favorite. I don't know if you have them up there. My new favorite are the teachers. I can't remember many what where this was from. The teachers that decided to do a safe protest and mm. all of them got in their cars and they pulled in, I guess, to the parking lot of a school or something, and they did a honking protest. Awesome. They're my new favorite. Wow. No, They're I my new favorite. Okay. That. Let's talk about what you wanted to talk about now, because we're talking about the big picture. It looks picture. like it was in Georgia. Thank you. That's uh, why I thought Gwinnett, it was this. The Gwinnett teacher. That's it. That's okay. right. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's down there where my family's from down there. But, but what were they protesting? Opening up the schools without oh. them being safe. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. See, our yeah. schools are opening up in September. Yeah. But we're yeah. in a very different situation up here. You right. are. Very different. That That's right. Because... Yeah. Yeah, we're much, we have a lot. We are much safer. There's very, very few cases up here. Um, all the way along, our numbers have been very low. The reaction and response has been as radical. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and in part, that's why um, our Bonnie Henry, 
who has been our leader here uh, for our health and, and wellness and well-being, has been very clear about kindness and about respect and about being aware so that we can make wise choices for ourselves so that we can yeah. contain this. And, and it's been working. That's been where we're, that's where we're at right now in the province of BC, um, not across all of Canada, but for most of BC. But the thing that, that I wanted to yep. touch on was um, rebellion or being a rebel, right? So I think for both you and I, we in our, in our lives have been the rebels. Would that be fair to say? <laughs> yeah, to say? I think it'd be fair yes. to say. And, and have you heard that, that sometimes that skips a generation? Is that true? <laughs> well, here's what I'm noticing. My daughter's friends, that I've got a 15-year-old and an 18-year-old daughter, my daughters and their friends are so conservative in all of this to the point where they're almost embarrassed when I start talking about how abnormal this is. And if I'm willing to walk outside of my car in a parking lot and not put my mask on immediately, and my older daughter's saying to me, mom, mom, people are looking, you've got, to, you've got to put your mask on. And I'm saying, sweetheart, it's totally safe right now. It's completely, there is zero risk right now. Yes, but other people, she says to me. I said, other people are 12 feet away from me. You know, we, are, we understand now more about this this virus, we understand how it works better than we did four months ago when we had to be even more careful because we didn't know. Right. But now we know. So the rebel in me is the one who's saying, hang on a minute. Let's start questioning or let's continue questioning the small picture, the big picture, the micro, the macro, so that we can be in a place within ourselves that is that feels safe and feels comfortable in our solar plexus, like right in the center of our of our bodies. And what's interesting is that when I see how people are reacting and responding, what I know to be true, and this is why I say when, when, this, when this ends, and it will, most people will go back to being the way they were before. Not everybody, but most mm. people will. Because the people's responses to what's happening now are the same way they would have responded to any catastrophe, the same way they would respond to the dinner boiling over, as the car crash, as the losing their job, as whatever. The personality that they had going into this is the same personality they had at the beginning of this or before this. And I've seen this, I've witnessed this. The same person who's gonna give me the stink eye because I get out of my car and don't put my mask on right away would have given me the stink eye a year ago for something else. Do you see what I'm saying? So when this is all said and done, and again, it will be, we will get through this, we, this will pass. How many people will go back to their old normal, happily go back to their old normal, because that's what they're comfortable with. The people who have found a voice in all of this, who are acting differently than they have done in the past, will they keep that voice loud and proud? I'm curious about that. I don't have the answer to that. I'm curious about that. Because when we're looking at what is normal and what is not normal and abnormal and all of that, like you were saying before the break, we have to look at what are we doing personally at the micro level, our own normal, and then what's happening externally to us in the cultural normal. And how much of that are we comfortable with and how much of it are we not comfortable with? Right. You know, and let's talk to this for a minute, because these are all great questions. And they don't come out of the questions don't come out of just some imaginary, uh, imaginary, uh, imaginary idea. Mm -hmm. You and I are both people that are working very hard to keep our staff paid and to keep our business that we have spent, in my case, the network and the show, 16 years mm -hmm. of investing a lot of money into airtime. And we you and I have been through 07, 08. We've been through those days, mm -hmm. right? We've been through them, them like when we went through the four all of that, right? And so we have an experience of how to move beyond the environment outside. Mm -hmm. When we were almost at the height of this, I decided to create a network in 10. We started in nine. But if you are that kind of person, 
it is going to be hard for you to go back because you can't remember what back is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I totally know what you're saying. And this is actually a piece of the healing journey. Yeah. This is what I tell people. When you have your wake up call, whatever that wake up call looks like, there actually is no going back. As hard as you might try kicking and screaming, you might want to go back to the way things were. But as a matter of fact, once your mind has shifted, once something has changed in your body energetically in response to a wake up call, there is no going back. So for those people who are experiencing wake up calls with this situation that we're in right now globally, they will not go back to the old normal. They will be the ones that move forward in a new idea of themselves. And it's time. It's time for that to happen. But having said that, I know, I know that there will be people who have stayed the same all the way through. They're just amplifying their reaction and response to the things that are going on around them. When this settles down, they will settle down back into who they were before. They will not have accepted the possibility of change. If we're going to look at what's normal and abnormal, I would suggest that change is normal. I mean, this is this is this has been my rant for a very long time, Pat. Yeah. Change is the most constant thing that we have going on in our yeah, life. It is. And yeah, to, it is. To, to fight against it is a waste of time, quite frankly. And you will get sick if you you will get sick physically in your body if you try to resist change because this is what we are here to do. We are here to evolve. We are here to grow. We are here to expand. That's what the whole earth is doing, right? So we look at climate change and some of those conservative arguments around climate change. You know, everything has to stay the same. No, no, nothing is going to stay the same. If you want things to change, change your behavior, change what you're throwing out, change the toxic chemicals that you're using, start using essential oils or start using natural products or whatever, you know, make those kinds of changes. But the climate, is always changing. It always has changed. And at what point are you going to decide this is the climate it's going to be forever? It's it's not going to happen. And it's the same thing with the coronavirus. It's the same thing with what we're going through right now. Everything will change. And so this, this is why this topic was so important for us to share today, because what I saw happening with the new normal is that people were resisting change. They were saying, oh, this is the new normal? Okay, Mask six feet away, hand sanitizer, staying home, not interacting with anybody, not having any kind of community beyond what's available online. Okay, I'm going to grab that and I'm not going to change it. And in, 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 in four months, five months, people have gotten locked into this idea that this is now the new normal and they're not allowed to question it. They're not allowed to push against it. They're not allowed to rebel against it. They're not allowed to think practically about it. <laughs> and ask questions about it. So that's why I wanted us to do this show. That's why I wanted people to start thinking, actually, this is abnormal. Holding on to this is abnormal and not healthy. Hmm. Everything's changing around us so quickly. But I understand also why, from a psychological point of view, people are doing this. They're they're having to hold on to something for dear life because suddenly everything is changing far more quickly than it had been before. Yeah. And you know, one of the things I want to talk to you about with this too is Megan and, and let's just, let, let's just go, let's just talk to, to, let's talk about of what this really means as we look forward. I think let's go ahead and skip this break. Uh, if you don't mind Megan, because one of the things I want to talk with you about as we move forward is that people say, but wait a minute, Pat, we're not sure what you're saying. You know, do you want us to accept this? Do you want us not to accept it? And let me just give you a little story and let's talk about it. Mm-hmm. There are those of us that for, fought a lifetime for LGBTQ rights, mm-hmm. a lifetime. Mm-hmm. My first experience, Stonewall. I am that old, Stonewall. Mm-hmm. My first experience. Yeah. Um, and then... We seem to be rolling along in the United States here. But then all of a sudden, we got something that's going to go to the Supreme Court. And you stop and you say, well, wait a minute. That's the new normal. We, We already went through that. 
we've already fought for things. Mm -hmm. And what are you going to do to transgender people? What exactly is that? Mm -hmm. So I think even though we're talking about this, Megan, we're not saying take your eye off the ball. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Yes. It's it, for me, it's about encouraging people to use their intelligence, whether that's their emotional intelligence or their psychological intelligence or their physical intelligence. Mm -hmm. That's the empowerment piece for me. Mm -hmm. If something doesn't feel right for you, it probably isn't. That's your body, that's your energy system saying, Hey, over here, not aligning, question this, ask about this. Ever since you're number 45, <laughs> got on the hot seat. What I've seen from my perspective up here is a huge smoke screen. And lots of changes are happening behind the scenes that are eroding your personal freedoms. Whether you're a woman and your personal freedoms, you're a person of color and your personal freedoms, you're a transgendered person, you're questioning your fluidity, whatever it is, there were things in place that protected your freedoms. And if you look closely behind the smoke screen, you're going to see at the state level and at the federal level that a lot of that has been removed. At the environmental level, it's been removed. Something is going on behind the smoke screen. Yeah. Right? If we accept that as normal, we do ourselves a huge injustice. We put ourselves back in our evolution. I want people to think, think about what's going on. Think about why you're saying yes to certain things and allowing certain controls of your behavior to be commonplace and, and how quickly you're accepting that and then putting that on other people, that whole shame game we were talking about last month. I want you to think about it. I feel like there's a lot of people in the world who probably don't want you to think about it, mm -hmm. but I want you to think about it because that's where your questions are going to come from. Mm. And that's where you're going to stop just blindly accepting what you're being told and the status quo. And you're going to ask, is there something better? Is there a better way? And that is abnormal. Mm -hmm. so that's why I want it to is. be the new yeah. abnormal. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're, you're going to be teaching, I get, uh, I think the confident healer, uh, mm -hmm. it's coming up in September, right? This is, is a, this is an intensive, it's intuitive healers, it's a certification. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what I love about teaching is that sometimes we tweak what mm -hmm. we teach. Mm -hmm. and, and what do I mean by that? Is we share different stories, like right. you may keep the same principles, but the way you come out, it is different. Mm -hmm. I'm revamping everything that I'm doing. Right. I'm renaming what I'm doing under the, a brand I've had for years, Street Smart Spirituality. And I'm moving. And, and, and when I get asked, what is the motivation? Are you looking for sales? Are, living is the motivation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Breathing today is the motivation. Right. Because my sense is, the way that I was teaching, I've got to give people something a little bit more street smart, mm -hmm. you know, different ways to yeah. maneuver, to see what you're talking about, because not everybody plugs into the news. Not everybody hears what we hear mm -hmm. because it's too much for us. Mm -hmm. It's way too much for right. people to really look at what's happening. But this is the question right? Mm -hmm. You know, as you look at what you're creating, as you look at the work you're doing, as you're looking at what people want, right? Mm -hmm. Is it now time to question the status quo, even in some of the work we do? I mean, I don't know the answer to that question. I'm asking myself that question. Right, right. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's interesting. I've had a few people approach me about this upcoming Confident Healer. And their, their question is, well, are you even going to run it this year? Mm. Well, yes. Why wouldn't I run it? Well, but you, you see what's happening in the world. Yes, of course I see what's happening in the world. That's why even now more than ever, it is so important that we have healers in the world who are grounded in the work that they do 
who are willing to use their intelligence to understand the healing process and are able to offer stability to people as they work through their wounding and work through what they need to read. The world needs healers right now more than ever. And I've been saying that for years, but now I'm really saying it from the, every rooftop I can. So yes, I'm running it. Well, what about people getting together? Well, the whole course is online. It has been for the last six years since I've been, since I put it together as a certification program. Virtually everything is online except for the one full day workshop that we do once a month in person. Yeah. And yes, there will be some new questions that we would ask each month. You know, are you, are you healthy? If you have a cold, don't show up. We'll, right. we'll zoom you in. You know, we'll find another way to work with you because we've done that already in the past anyways. So actually, very little is changing about the way that I'm running The Confident Healer, with the exception that I have a passion, an even deeper passion for it for this year because of what I'm seeing going on around me, the, the insanity that I'm witnessing in people's panic and insecurities and just panic. I mean, it's... I'm watching the chicken run around when the sky is falling and I'm, and I'm looking at these practical people who are intelligent and university educated, not that that makes you intelligent, but you know, they've gone through all the hoops and, and they're reacting instead of responding. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what I would love for people, it, and I know it's not the easiest thing in the world to do, but what I would love for people to begin practicing is responding instead of reacting. Yeah. Cause you can't think when you react, but when you respond, you can step back and you can think about what you're doing and how you're. Yeah. And I, I want to be, I want to also piggyback on that for a minute, because one of the things you said is look what you're doing. You don't just have one way to offer healing to people. Now mm -hmm. you now have said, yeah, if you want to come, it's this, if you don't want to, we're going to zoom you in. Mm hmm. That's one of those things that wouldn't have happened. Well, no, but what I'm saying is actually it did. It, it, it is how I've done it before. Uh, but my most case, people don't know that, right? right? You know what I'm saying? Yes, it's, that's true. Until they have the yeah, conversation with me. Yeah. You've been ahead of the curve, right? <laughs> but <laughs> what we're, time again? But now, but think of it. It is. Think about this. <laughs> people now will say, well, Megan, do you offer Zoom? And you'll say, well, you might say, of course, but you might say, yes, I've always done it that way. But mm -hmm. see, this is this is now the new abnormal, mm -hmm. even though you've been doing it for a really long time. Right. Right. And a lot of people have, whether it's Zoom or Skype, it doesn't matter what it is. Mm -hmm. But now, because the technology has adapted to what people really want, new doors are opening for people to step into their full nature. And mm -hmm. see, I think that is something that if we go back to what we call the, the normal, the new mm -hmm. normal, those things would shut down, but the cat's out of the bag. Right. It's going right. to be hard to tell, oh man, what is it? 20 million recovering alcoholics that they can't go online now. Right. How are you going to do that? Right. So I see, I see a timeline emerging. Um, and this this may be a way to put it all into perspective as we come to the end of the of our the hour the top of the hour. The old normal is what we've come out of, and your president's comment about men being insulted if there was a female vice president that's old normal. That is actually visualize this a huge bloated whale thrashing in its death throes as it is sinking into the muck and the mire at the very deepest bottom of the ocean. Just hold that image for a moment, because that's what I see when I look at the white privileged male patriarchy that we've had for the last 4,000, 5,000 years. It's this big bloated whale. It has served its time and it's now going to be fish food at the bottom of the ocean. But it's thrashing about trying to stay above water. OK, that's the old normal. Right now, we are currently in the new abnormal. And sometime in the future, that's when the new normal will show up. That's when we'll get, we'll sort of sort through everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful that's come out of this time period. And we will settle into a new normal. And none of it's wrong, right? The old normal is what, that's what we had. 
this is the new abnormal. We don't know what it is yet, but let's keep questioning it. Let's keep innovating. Let's keep moving forward. But let's not complacently accept what we're being told without some questions, some intelligent questions. And then let's accept that there will come a point where we look back on this and realize, wow, that was a crazy time. That was really out of the norm. And now we're in a new norm where some of these things that have been working now will become so normalized, we won't even think about it anymore. And the cycle will continue and it will repeat. <laughs> yeah. And you know, look, we've now evolved to a place where I, and I tell you what, I give men a lot more credit than that comment by the oh, president. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I have to tell you, the men I know, mm -hmm. Benny, the men that I know, yeah, that comment was probably meant for men of my dad's generation. Mm. But the men that I know and how they care for their daughters and their sons alike yeah, and the potentiality for what they promise their children mm -hmm. and whether you're, you know, you're somebody that grew up in a project like I did, you know, there is a level of love that transcends any comment like that. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, all the way along, even if, if we do consider that to be the old normal, there was always voices rebelling against that men and women, male and female voices saying, no, that's not okay. That's not working for me. Yeah. And those are the voices that will continue into the new normal with a, with a bigger platform perhaps than they had before. Well, and there you go. I mean, by the way, just thought I'd mention that, you know, almost four, well, four years ago or so, there actually was a woman who actually got more votes mm -hmm. in the popular vote and try to tell those 49 million people that that was just a cosmic joke. Yeah. Um, Megan, thank you for today. I know we're going to talk more about this because it is a concept mm -hmm. that really we do need to talk about. The heartbreak of trying to go back to something that doesn't exist, mm -hmm. that will be the doom of so many. Yeah. Yeah. Megan, yeah. last words. Thank you so much. I'll say what I've been saying all the way along. Please treat people the way you want to be treated. Mm. Just, it's really simple. It's just simple to be kind to one another. Don't make it hard. Don't make it complicated. Just be nice. Just a gesture here and there. It'll come back on you 100%. That's the ripple effect. We didn't quite get into that yet. But really, yeah. it starts with the individual. If, if you are scared and you are uncomfortable, instead of lashing out and giving that to someone else. Yeah. Do the work so that the ripple effect you send out in the world is one of kindness and respect yep. instead of fear and pain. Rock on, as I like to say, playing on the edge. We'll see you next time, everybody. Bye, everyone.